Let me guess. You're looking to build wealth in real estate, but you don't have quite enough capital in order to get started. Well, if you have enough equity in your home, there is a way for you to access that equity in order to build wealth in real estate quicker and more effectively. What you're looking for is a home equity line of credit, or for short, we call it a HELOC. Now, guys like Dave Ramsey say to avoid HELOCs at all costs because you're basically using your house as an ATM machine. But I'm here to tell you why I love HELOCs and how I use the HELOC in order to build wealth in real estate quicker than I could have without it. And I made hundreds of thousands of dollars in the process. Let's get to it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you didn't already know, my name is Jay Costa. I'm a real estate investor, builder, and agent here in Northern New Jersey. And if you get value out of this video after watching, please hit the like button down below and also consider subscribing because we're slowly building a tight knit community here of like minded individuals looking to build wealth in real estate. I'm going to share with you all of the benefits of a home equity line of credit and how these benefits can fast track your real estate investing journey and get you to build wealth quicker than you could without. Now, I've been using a HELOC myself for just about three years now, and I was able to build wealth that I definitely could not have done without my HELOC. So let's go over the best benefits and the best part of a HELOC, what the risks are that you need to be aware of, and I will also share with you at the end my top three golden rules of HELOC investing. First, let's go over the positives and the benefits of a home equity line of credit. First, it's easy to apply for. Yes, you do need to show enough income as well as at least decent to good credit, but as long as you have those two things, plus enough equity in your house, obviously, the HELOC lender will approve approve you for the home equity line of credit, and you could start using it right away. That brings us to our second pro, our second benefit of a HELOC, and that is quick access and approval. Now, unlike a standard mortgage or a refinance or something like that, that has like an underwriting process and everything, a HELOC does not have that at all. They have their own underwriting process, I'm sure, but it's not like a mortgage, so you can get approved for a HELOC in as little as like a week. My third HELOC benefit that I want to share with you is your quick access to capital that you get. This is simply a no-brainer and really the whole point of a HELOC. It allows you to access the equity that you have in your home in a quick and easy way. This is capital that you would not be able to access unless you did some other loan product like a cash out refinance and that has its drawbacks as well. And you could use this equity on pretty much whatever you want. Now, this is when it could start turning into a little bit of a double-edged sword if you're not careful and uh, have a certain strategy going in on what precisely to use your HELOC for and what not to use your HELOC for. The number four benefit of a HELOC is the flexibility that it provides to you. Now, a HELOC does have usually a higher interest rate than your standard conventional mortgage, but it offers you flexibility that a conventional mortgage cannot provide. For instance, since a HELOC is not amortized like a regular mortgage, and the interest that you pay is based on what's called an average daily balance, which is exactly what it sounds like, the average daily balance that you have per day in a month, if your balance is zero, guess what? You're paying zero dollars in interest and zero dollars in payment at all. In other words, it costs you absolutely nothing if you don't use it. So there really is no drawback in my mind to at least be approved for and have a home equity line of credit and access to that capital as long as you have the discipline to not use it on bills or to fund your lifestyle. In addition to that, since a HELOC is what's called a second lien a loan, loan product, that means that the first lien is your standard conventional mortgage, which for most of us is going to be a very low interest rate mortgage. So you're able to keep that really low interest rate mortgage intact while also adding on that HELOC as a second lien position loan. This is in comparison to something like a cash out refinance, which will give you access to the same capital, but that cash out refinance is basically paying off that first loan and replacing it with a mortgage that is probably, at this point anyway, going to be a much higher interest rate. And lastly, you can actually take the money out of a HELOC and pay it back as you please. Now, obviously you will have a minimum interest only payment, but let's say you take out $100,000 and you want to pay off 50,000 of it now and 50,000 of it later, whenever the time may be, it is totally up to you as long as you're making that minimum interest only payment. And like I said, the HELOC will calculate the interest that you owe on your average daily balance. So if you owe 100,000 for half of the month and 50,000 for the other half of the month, your average daily balance would be $75,000. Pretty simple, right? And that brings me to my number five benefit or pro of a home equity line of credit, and that is interest-only payments. Now, most, if not all, HELOCs do have 
two repayment periods. The first is what's called a draw period, and that usually lasts for the first 10 years of the home equity line of credit. This is when you're only responsible to pay, minimum payment is interest only. Now, after that 10 years expires though, it goes into what's called a repayment period, and that is when it actually turns into a more amortized, more similar to a conventional mortgage, and that is when you're gonna have to start paying both interest and principal. So keep that in mind, after the first 10 years, your minimum payment will go up. And this is a risk as well of a HELOC that you need to be aware of since a HELOC has a variable interest rate based on the prime rate. So your payment after 10 years may be much, much higher than what you were paying just the month before. My number six benefit of a HELOC is zero closing costs. Now this will depend on the lender of course. So Make sure if you're applying for a HELOC, ask all the questions necessary, but most HELOCs, almost all HELOCs, have either zero closing costs or very, very little closing costs. This is compared to your standard conventional mortgage or cash out refinance, where you're gonna have a pretty good amount of closing costs, probably thousands of dollars. My HELOC, for instance, I had absolutely zero closing costs. I had to pay nothing out of pocket. The lender even prayed for the appraiser to come and appraise the property. And that is when they approved me for up to 200 thousand dollars i made a video about this in the past i'll put a link in the description box as well as up in the corner keep in mind it was one of my first videos that i made so the quality may not be quite as good as this one but maybe i'll make a new version pretty soon if you want one drop a comment in the comment section down below so it's important to keep in mind that as many benefits as a heloc can have they are not for everybody for instance if you're the type of person that racks up a lot of consumer debt on your credit cards and things like that or lives kind of, let's say, above their means, a HELOC is not gonna be for you. You're just gonna get yourself into more trouble and dig a deeper hole for yourself, but this time, your house that you live in and your family lives in is gonna be on the hook. If you're looking for a loan product of some sort to pay off consumer debt or credit card debt, you're gonna wanna look elsewhere. Something like a personal loan may be more beneficial to you in that situation. Now, this also goes for home improvements and additions and things like that. A personal loan may be beneficial to you. You could also use the equity of your home through a home equity loan. Now, now, this is very similar to a HELOC, but it's basically a fixed interest rate instead of a variable one, which makes it slightly less risky. But keep in mind, you're still taking equity out of your home in order to put it into an improvement or something like that, an addition where even if you think you're adding even more value to the property, 99 out of 100 times, I promise you guys, you're not. So you really need to be careful and cautious in regards to what you use your HELOC money for. So instead of using your HELOC in order to get into more consumer debt, and yes, I think home improvements are consumer debt, here are the best ways for you to use your HELOC. Number one is short-term real estate investing. I find a HELOC to be the absolute perfect tool to use in short-term real estate investing because it is extremely flexible and you could take money out and pay it back as you please and as you're able to. And since it's short term, the variable interest rate is much less likely to kill your investment and kill your profit. This includes house flipping, it includes the Burr method, and it includes new construction projects. That has been my most recent real estate investment I've been getting more involved in is new construction and development. I basically use my HELOC to fund a new construction duplex that we're building and we're going to plan on selling probably in March or April. So I will, I will keep you guys up to date on that. If you actually want a walkthrough of that on this channel, I usually don't kind of share my personal investments with you guys. If you want more of that, drop a comment in the comment section down below, and that'll be my next video for you. Now, I've used all three of those methods in the past, and the HELOC has no doubt played a huge factor in helping me build wealth that I would not have been able to without it. A lot of you guys ask about using a HELOC to buy rental properties. Now, you can use a HELOC to buy a rental property, but only if, only if you plan on doing a cash out refinance after a closing or after adding value to the property through rehab and renovations that you can take that cash from the cash out refinance and go pay off the HELOC. And the reason for that is because I would never hold a HELOC balance for longer than let's say a year to year and a half. Now, this brings me to my three golden rules of HELOC investing in real estate. Number one, it has to be short term. As I just said, never hold a HELOC balance more than a year to year and a half. The reason for this is because the longer you hold that balance, 
the more susceptible and the more risk you're taking on that the economy may go on a downturn and the interest rates could get volatile and go up very significantly and completely choke out your investment. My number two golden rule is to always have an exit strategy. You should never have a balance on a HELOC with no plan or immediate plan on paying it back. And lastly, number three is never take money out of a HELOC that you don't have the capital somewhere else that you could pay it off in a worst case scenario. Now, some of you have left me comments thinking that this is too conservative. And listen, you do you. Everyone has their own risk tolerance based on their personality, their situation. But me personally, I would never take money out of a HELOC based on the home that I'm in now that my whole family lives in and take that money that I would not be able to pay it off if I completely lost all that money. Now, I'm talking about retirement accounts, brokerage accounts with stocks, even equity in another property. Because you have to be aware of the simple fact that a HELOC lender can call that balance from you at any time. So let's say the market, the economy takes a downturn pretty significantly and the HELOC lender calls your $100,000 or whatever balance to be paid right away, like they did in 2008. If you don't have the money anywhere else to pay off that $100,000, what are you going to be forced to do? I'll tell you what, you have to sell your house. And that's if you have enough to cover both liens, both the mortgage and the HELOC. If you don't, it would be a short sale. And if you don't get a short sale approved, you'll lose your house to foreclosure. And that is not something that I want to put myself or my family through. Like I said, everyone's got different risk tolerances, different situations. If you're single and living alone and you could deal with that, you do you. But like I said, I wouldn't do that. Now, if you want more tips and tricks on HELOC investing and investing in real estate, I'll put a playlist up in a corner here as well as in the description for all of my HELOC content that I've made on this channel. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you think about HELOCs and HELOC investing. And if you agree with all these positives as well as a couple of the risks that I brought up to you that you need to know as well. Am I being too conservative? Let me know in the comment section and I will see you next time.